Hey guys, Mike here and in this video I'm going to take you through a couple of tips and tricks for the Nexus 5 and the Android 4.4 KitKat in general. Let's start with just a few non-software related tricks and then we'll get in depth with this new Android version. For instance, I was asked a lot where's the notification light on the Nexus 5. So here it is, it's on the front face, below the screen. That's an RGB LED in there, so it will light up in different colors with the help of the right app. But more about that in a future clip. Another thing I'm sure you want to know is how to take a screenshot on the Nexus 5. Well, it's easy, you just need to press the power button and the volume down button at the same time as you can see here. So nothing really changed from the previous Nexus devices. Besides this, it's worth mentioning that the Nexus 5 still supports wireless charging and works just fine with the popular LG Orb, but should get along alright with other Qi enabled chargers as well. With those out of the way, let's grab a KitKat now, I mean, talk about this new Android version. Visually, the system UI is a lot simpler than before, more muted, with shades of black, grey and white used for most interface elements. There aren't that many major changes, but a whole bunch of subtle ones, so let's have a look. For starters, we have the lock screen, which is the first thing you're going to see when booting up a device with Android 4.4. It's changed a little bit. Down here on the bottom, there's now an arrow pointing up, which suggests that something is going to happen if you'll pull it up. And indeed it does, Google Now is launched, just like with Jelly Bean. Besides that, there's this camera icon here in the corner, again, meant to suggest that you can drag from the right side of the screen to quickly launch the camera. The lock screen still supports widgets, but by default these are not activated on the Nexus 5. You'll need to enable them from the settings, in the security submenu, and then you'll get the ability to add all sorts of stuff on your lock screen, if you want to of course. And before we move on, there's another neat trick involving the lock screen's integrated audio controls. When having a song running on the device, you get a full album cover now on the lock screen, and the ability to jump back and forth within the song by long pressing the pause play button and that's something new introduced with Android 4.4. Ok, enough about that, let's unlock the phone and have a peek at the home screen. This one is now fully integrated with Google Now. Just by saying OK Google when you're on one of the home screens, you'll immediately wake Google Now. Ok Google, how are you today? That's only going to work though if you're on a home screen. Besides this, there's only a single home screen on the Nexus 5 out of the box. It might appear that there are two, judging by these two dots here at the bottom. But the most left screen is again Google Now with your selection of used cards. The only way of adding more home screens is to grab an icon and drag it to the side onto another screen like this. If you want to rearrange the home screens, you'll need to long press and pop up this menu. From here, you can also add widgets, change the wallpapers or access the home screens options, from where you can by the way disable Google Now. You can't however delete any of the home screens manually, they are only deleted automatically if you'll completely get rid of the apps and widgets on any of them. Back to those wallpapers, there are a few pre-included, but you can of course add your own pics as background images as well. What's cool is that wallpapers now stretch over the entire home screen now, under the standard Android buttons on the bottom part and under the system tray area on top. The same thing happens on the app drawer as well as you can see here. Speaking of it, the app drawer only contains apps now, there's no longer a different tab for widgets. The only way to add widgets is by pressing on the home screens and then selecting the widgets option. Besides this, the multitasking and the notification panels haven't changed much. A list of quick toggles, which you can by the way easily access by swiping from the top with two fingers, has been slightly redesigned and got an addition, this location button. By the way, the location menu got a location mode set of options, where you can select how to use the location services, if you need high accuracy or if you want to save up battery life. This way, you don't really have to turn off location every time you want your phone to last longer. Moving on, there's a new dialer included with Android 4.4. Besides the redesigned looks, it has the ability to automatically grab info from the internet about an unknown number that might be calling you. In other words, it offers some type of yellow pages included. Besides that, Hangouts is now the default messaging application, which means that it handles SMSs and integrates them with your Google Plus chats. I don't necessarily mind that, but if you do, there's an option to select another default SMS app from the settings under wireless and networks. Besides this, there are only a few other things worth mentioning here. One cool aspect of Android 4.4 KitKat is the fact that it allows certain apps to take full advantage of the entire screen, by hiding the menus and the system tray bars. For instance, that happens with the included Google Play Books app, and hopefully more applications will support this feature in the future. If you want to display the menus again, you'll just have to swipe from the top, as you can see here. I should also mention that the Nexus 5 comes with QuickOffice pre-installed, which is quite a capable app for dealing with documents, spreadsheets and presentations, and I do hope this app will become standard with other Android 4.4 devices as well. 
And last but not least, there are a few new options in the settings. For instance, there's the home submenu, from where you can easily switch between your installed launchers. If you've used custom launchers on Android devices before, you know that actually setting one as default can be quite a bit of a pain, as you need to dig through the options within each launcher's settings. Well, that's not a problem anymore with KitKat. However, you should know that this option will only be visible under settings after you install a custom launcher. By default, with only the standard Android 4.4 launcher on the device, it's hidden. Besides that, there's this tap and pay menu, meant to make NFC payments simpler, and the printing menu, where you can configure cloud or network printers, but I haven't actually used any of these services, so I won't get in depth here. Ok, all this being said, that's about it for this clip. As you've seen, there are quite a few additions and changes brought over by Android 4.4 KitKat, and these tips and tricks should help you get used to them. I also have another video about the hidden features of Android KitKat planned for the next couple of days, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, please tell me in the comments below if there are any other cool tricks that you know of and if you like this video or not. And of course, a thumbs up is going to be much appreciated as well as you sharing this clip wherever possible. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in my future clips.